Hello, this is Tom from anti-proton.com and I would like to talk today about, quickly, about entombment of reactors. Entombment of reactor is what you do when you have absolutely no option left, period. Now, I've had a lot of people on here asking about entombment and saying, shouldn't we just dump all this stuff on top of the reactors? Entombment, by the way, is when you take a reactor that you don't know how to take care of and you dump humongous amounts of uh, uh, dirt and debris and boron powder of various types and uh, anything else you can think of that will either reflect or absorb. Well, no, excuse me, not reflect. Don't want to reflect. That would be very, very bad. That will absorb uh, radiation. Neutrons are very important to absorb, of course but uh, uh, also alpha, uh, beta, and gamma, if you can. And you entomb the damn thing. Basically, you put a lot of dirt on it and let it go that way. So, you've heard uh, Michikaku, Dr. Michikaku, he got up on uh, the TV and talked about how we should entomb the reactor, but if you listen closely, he didn't say we absolutely should. He said, and at the time, everything was going really to hell with the reactors. He said the option needs to be on the table. People need to be ready to do it at a moment's notice. It's got to be there. And he was right. But, at this stage, we do not need to entomb the reactors. There was a guy I saw in here recently who was uh, talking about how you absolutely, let me see if I can see his video in here, you have to entomb the reactor. If you don't entomb the reactor, actually, he said that anybody who didn't think that you should entomb the reactor was an idiot, I believe is what he said. But, um, I don't think I would go that, go that far. I actually, uh, where was it? Where did he put it? Here we go. ISO Mystery. He says, shut it down and tomb the Japan nuclear reactors now. Uh, what else does he say? He says a whole bunch of stuff about um, entombment and how uh, deadly that is, etc. Well, here's the, pro here's the problem with people like that. They say entomb because they don't understand what entombment means. Once you've entombed a reactor, you cannot fix it. You cannot solve the problem. It's done. We're spraying water now. He said it's a little peewee amount of water. Yeah, it is a peewee amount of water, but you don't need much. You just need to keep the damn thing cool. The, the radioisotopes that are in it are losing their energy. A lot of them are cycling through half-lives pretty quickly. Some of them are not. Some of them will be there for a long time. But the ones that put out the most energy, the most thermal energy, are the ones that go through the uh, go through their energy states, the, or sorry, their um, half-lives the fastest. Like uh, like uh, radio iodine, for example, everybody always goes on about radio iodine, and uh, uh, several variations of cesium. Some of them, like cesium one thirty seven, are there for a really long time. But there are other short lived versions of each one of these. In fact, uh, uh, there's even what radioactive lead and uh, thorium and other, th other things like that. And basically, the, a lot of these things go through their lives really quickly, and they put out a lot of energy. A lot of them are also gone. Every day, the the levels of them drop uh, well, tremendously. Given a few more weeks, we'll be able to pull the fuel out. Just pull the fuel rods out. Start putting them away somewhere. Ripping out the damaged pieces. You'll never use the reactors again. It's not like they're going to repair them. But they can go in there and start clean up and containment. These aren't runaway reactors. They aren't going to be. If you understand anything about nuclear physics, you'll understand that it's not going to happen. It could have happened. It could have, but it didn't. And now we've gotten past the point where things like that are probably going to happen. You could still have a problem, and they need to be ready to entomb it if they need to, but it really shouldn't be needed anymore, and you definitely should not just go do it. Entombing it would be like if you had an infection that was really horrible in your leg. You could cut the leg off, and then let the stump heal, and that will fix the infection. Or you could keep that option on the table and attempt to fix the infection. Once you've entombed it, you aren't stopping the radiation. It's all there. It seeps in the groundwater dives down deep into the into the water, gets into the ocean, uh, it contaminates the hell out of the place like it did in Chernobyl. And by the way, that guy, uh, what's his name again? Uh, uh, what was his name? ISO Mystery claims that, that Fukushima Daiichi is, 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 is worse than Chernobyl, he says. He actually says worse than Chernobyl. You've got to be kidding me, right? I guess, I guess he must not know anything about Chernobyl. Chernobyl was so tremendously worse than this that it's... It's in its own special league. Thousands of thousands and thousands of pounds, several tons of nuclear material was blown thousands of feet into the air. Not, not gas and steam like we've had that uh, come out of this one. Or the little hydrogen explosions. Yeah, they blew the roof off the building, whoop-de-doo. But those were hydrogen explosions. They were gas. They were thermobaric explosions. This was not that. 
when 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 um, Chernobyl exploded, one of the explosions was caused by a, a ruptured um, uh, not ruptured but what was catastrophic uh, rupture of the of the um, reactor vessel. Basically, <clears throat> it was water. It was like blowing the top off a pressure cooker. But the other explosion, nobody's one hundred percent sure. If you read the hundreds of pages of documents, which I have done, you'll find that there's still a lot of conjecture among scientists as to what caused. The, the actual first explosion. The first explosion may have been caused by something else. Nobody's 100% sure. The, uh, there was a lot of neutron flux at the time. Basically put, it could have been a, a, a small criticality for all we know. But it was massive. It was tremendous. It was not like this. So these aren't even the same type of reactors. They won't do that. They can't do that. Well, they can do that, but not really. I mean, you'd have to do incredible stuff to make them do this. So please, people, get the facts straight before you flip out. Make sure you know what you're talking about first. You don't have to be a physicist. I'm not a physicist. I don't, I don't claim to be a physicist. I am going to get my physics degree, so I will be a, a physicist one of these days here, but I am not now. I'm a computer scientist. I have a degree in computer science. That is not physics. I have studied physics for all of my adult life and for much of my life as a child, so I know a hell of a lot about physics and math and so on, but I am not a physicist. However, I've also studied, God, I have hundreds of books, I've read hundreds of papers, thousands of hours of time have been dedicated to physics, learning the math, the, the science behind it, I mean everything, not just the little concepts, but the numbers, how to calculate everything, what everything means. I have Geiger counters, I... I measure stuff, I do studies and everything like that. Uh, the point is, you cannot just entomb the reactor. And you should not just say things like that, that you should just entomb the reactor as though somehow that's a good idea. It's a terrible idea. It's a ridiculously terrible idea. Even Michu Kaku said, last ditch effort. The last thing to do, period. We're not at that stage yet. I don't think we're going to be at that stage yet. I don't think it's pride of the Japanese or something like that. So, you know. Anyway, this is Tom from anti-proton.com. Please understand what's going on. It's very, very important to understand your world around you rather than just reacting to it, okay? Bye-bye.